Okay. Hi, everyone. Just want to say hi again. It's so nice to see all of your faces. Daniel, Dinatali, Nathan, Daniel, Glad. It's so nice to see so many faces. Um, it's best seeing people, it's like being face to face. Seeing the same people all the time can be a bit boring. So it's really nice to see all of you. So as um, I said already, we'll be doing the Early Adventist Pioneer Award. Now these are maybe, pioneer is maybe a word that you haven't used before, you don't know what it is, and that's absolutely okay because we are here to learn. Right, so I think you all need to put your thinking caps on, thinking caps on, and let's get started. Now, I'm going to go through the requirements first, and this is generally what you need to do to get the little patch on a uh, award on your sash and what's got a tick next to it is exactly what we'll be covering in this session and the rest of it you'll have to do with your parents because there's some things that we just can't do we just can't do we don't have the stuff with us okay so that's um going through what 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 adventist pioneers are we're going to sing a song or basically i hope you can sing it there uh, memorize a, learn, a memory verse and do a few activities together. So, is this all this work? Yeah. So, what is an Adventist pioneer? Now, an Adventist pioneer is is the, referred to the amongst a person who was amongst the first group of people to set up the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Now, at the bottom, I've got a little timeline here from the early 1700s or the yeah early, late 1700s to the to 1863. Now that seems like a long, long time ago, but even though it is, it's not quite. It's maybe hmm, over on my maths. What's my math saying? Maybe about, I'll say around about 150 years ago, which isn't, it's not too long of a period of time. Now, before then, the Adventist church didn't exist, even though it's based on the Bible. So what these people did, these pioneers, what they did, these old people, we've got, you can see these old people on the screen in black and white, as you can see, because the picture quality wasn't that good back then. They, they all read the Bible individually, trying to understand the Bible more. What does God want me to do? What does, how does God want me to live? And they read the Bible and together they bumped into each other at different times and they had different conversations. And then after, you know, reading about the Bible, understanding that Jesus is coming again and he wants us to go to heaven and understanding that we should go to church and worship on Saturday, today, and not on Sunday, finding out about eating healthy foods, they came together and then they formed the Seventh-day Adventist church. So we refer to those people who studied the Bible, found out, hmm, this is the truth, and started the Adventist church. We refer to them as pioneers, okay? Pioneers, the people that start things off, well, started things off. Now, next slide, Ellen Gould White. I always used to wonder what the G stood for, so I thought I'll tell you guys. Ellen, I'm sure you've all heard of Ellen G. White before, and the G stands for Gould. Now, these are a few facts about her that you need to remember for the worksheet, okay? The first one is she had her first vision when she was 17. Now, I know this sounds like, maybe it sounds like years away, <laughs> but 17 is coming to get you. And it's, it's not that old. It's quite, it's, we would still class someone who's 17 as young, yeah? So she had her first vision when she was rather young. She had a twin sister called Elizabeth. Is anyone a twin? Put your hands up. Where my nephew should be here. Put your hands up, twins. If you're a twin, put your hands up. Um, and she wrote more than 40 books in her lifetime. So she read, she read, she wrote lots of books. Some of the books um, people often refer to in church. So there's a book called Education, and this one's my favorite book, Steps to Christ. And Steps to Christ, you have to read it if you're going to be a master guide, which I hope you're all going to be. Um, other things about Ellen White is even though she had her first vision, she had multiple visions throughout her life. She also lived in Australia for some time to help support and encourage other pioneers to start a school called Avondale School, which is now a university college. So a key thing back then with the pioneers is they set up institutions, institutions meaning schools, university, you know, um, um, health resorts, you know, where you can go for a spa, a massage, 
those kinds of things they set th these things up so that could people could learn more about god so as you get older you can think to yourself well maybe i want to learn more about you know education about maths english and science continuing about geography uh, about engineering all these things you can learn more about them but also in adventist schools and what, there's an adventist school in australia mm -hmm. as you can see above question is it possible for you to a little bit explain to Adventists what a vision is? Oh, uh, yes. Word and, uh, you know, and, and Natalie very wisely said, can Ruby give us a little bit more information on that? Yes. Okay, what is a vision? This is a good... Pastor, you can help me out. Pastor, uh, you uh, can help uh, me out. I'll start and then you can... I you need can... to remind you that this is your presentation. Ruby. I'm just joking. No problem. <laughs> Um, a vision is when God speaks to you. So some people have um, a vision when their eyes can be closed or um, when um, just a, a message from God that comes to your brain, but nobody else is getting the message. So it could be five people in the room and God is speaking to you. It, you can hear it or you can, you can see it happening, but nobody else can see it happening with you. You've done a very good job. Thank you, Romy. Thank you. Okay, that is what a vision is. Now, um, I think, and uh, then leading off from that, um, there's a difference between God speaking to you in a dream and having a vision. If it's in a dream, it means you're sleeping, and then you might God might give you a um, a dream, and like Daniel, is it Daniel? No, Daniel interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream. So God can speak to you whilst you're sleeping and you dream and then you wake up and you think, hmm, this is what has come to me. God is telling me this. Now, how do we know if something's just a, a dream, like if, if God's given us a dream or if we're just having a random dream? How do we know? And I want you to hold that question. So I hold the question and we're going to get to it in a bit. So if you're wondering, hmm, how do I know if I've had a vision or if I'm just, my, my thoughts are just going, I want you to hold that thought, okay? We're going to get there. Now, the next person here we have is John Nevins Andrews, J.N. Andrews. Now, he is another Adventist pioneer. Can everyone, don't unmute your mics, just say pioneer. I can't see your mouse moving. Everyone say pioneer. All right, I can see, I can see Miles moving. Well done, MJ. Now, he joined the church when he was 17. He was the first overseas missionary. This means that he traveled to different countries. For example, some of you said you are, you're from Kenya. Some of you said um, Indonesia, I heard. Cuba, any Cubans here? Brazil, um, whatever. If you travel to another country to tell other people about God, that means you're a missionary, okay? So he was J.N. Andrews, John Nevins Andrews, was the first person, he was in America, to travel to another country and tell other people about God. Now, he didn't just travel by himself as an individual, he traveled with his whole family. Can you imagine that? His whole family. And he even had, um, he had a daughter and a son. So does anyone have a sister? Wave your hand if you got a sister. Uh, or if you've got a brother, wave your hand. Or if you're just the only child, wave your hand. If you're riding solo, wave your hand. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. But he had two children and he traveled. He even went to Paris, like France in Paris, you know where the Eiffel Tower is. He traveled there and his children even learned French. The reason why they were learning about a different country, a different culture, was all to tell other people about God. And I've got a question for you. You're living in England and you speak English. Do you talk to other English people about God? Do you? That's something for us to think about and remember as we go through this presentation. All these pioneers are pioneers because they were always telling other people about God. They were talking about God, finding other people who had similar beliefs, finding other people who knew more than them, and, and learn from them, some people who knew less than them, so they were able to share. They were always talking about God. And this amazing thing about um, John Nevins Andrews, it says, I, obviously I haven't met him because when, when, uh, when he was, a, like, he's not alive, and by the time I was born, he died. 
he it says he could recite he remembered the whole new testament now do you guys even remember your memory gems hmm do you remember your i can see people shaking their heads do you remember your memory gems now this man could remember the whole new testament and his brain is not different from yours we all have a brain we all have the capacity we are all able to learn so we need to think about how am i spending my time am i always watching tv am i always watching films or am i trying to remember messages and bible verses in uh, am i trying to remember bible verses we need to think about that how are we spending our time because if we want to be missionaries tell other people about god we have to to, to be able to share about God, we have to be able to know about God, okay? So the key thing about knowing about God is we need to remember. So make sure you all learn your memory gems, okay? Now on the picture, on the, on the side here, you can see a picture of a university. Now there were, um, like I said before, there was Avondale School, there's also Andrews University, and Andrews University in America was named after John Nevins Andrews, and it's actually a very, very good university. I went there with the Pathfinders, oh, when I was a Pathfinder, it was actually 10 years ago, <laughs> um, yeah, when I was a bit younger, and you can see here my pastor, pastor, was, um, my part which pass is that oh i forgot his name um why have I, anyways my mind's gone black warren warren gillen yes he he went to that university and he graduated and he's now a pastor of Reading church yes so there's um so not only was john nevins andrews a pioneer when he was alive he left the legacy which meant that even after he died he's still being used like the the things that the foundation that he set is still being used like people People like us can still learn from him, okay? The next one is Joseph Bates. This man looks like a serious man, huh? <laughs> Joseph Bates, he's got a nice jacket though. Can you see what they're wearing, like a different kind of tie? Now, he was the co-founder of the SDA church. What does co-founder mean? Like, you know, if you're walking down the road and you find the pound, you're the finder of that pound. However, if you find the pound with your brother and your sister you are co-founders with your brother and sister of the pound now joseph bates along with ellen white and james white when they were reading the scriptures when they came together with lots of it when they got lots of information together about the sabbath about health what to eat um and about jesus coming again they found they co-found so it's like finding Yes, they found the SDA church and formed the church. Now, when he was 47, he believed Jesus would come again and he, in, he invested his money in the Advent movement. Now, what does that mean? When he found out Jesus was coming again, he thought to himself, I have lots of money in my, where's my purse? My purse is far away. I have lots of money in my pocket. Instead of buying myself a bicycle, I'm going to spend my money trying to tell others, using it to spread the gospel, trying to tell others more about God. And this is supposed to make us think, if you have five pounds in your pocket, what do you do? Do you buy ice cream? Do you buy sweets? Or do you want to buy your friends? You could buy your friends a Bible. You could buy your friends, you know, the quarterly. You can buy your friends a quarterly. When grandma, granddad, uncle, auntie, sister this, brother that from church gives you 10 pounds, give you three pounds. What's the first thing you think to spend your money on, huh? I'll be, sometimes I want to buy myself nice things. Sometimes, you know, you might see nice shoes a nice coat in the shop but we need to think about with the money that we have given us sometimes people give us money what are we spending our money on and the next one about joseph bates is he wrote a tract in 1846 whew, long time ago about the about the bible sabbath and james and ellen white read it and started keeping the sabbath too now what is a tract a tract is like pieces will pretend oh um tract is like a small it's not this is a book but it's not a tract a tract is more like a small piece of paper and it tells you about god normally in half it tells you about god you can read it so he made one of the this is how he spent his money 
on printing like tracks like this and giving it to people and telling them about God. Specifically, he told people about the Sabbath day. Now, is the Sabbath day Sunday or Saturday, everyone? Saturday. Well done. I can see your mouths moving. It's Saturday. Now, a lot of, you know, even though people are older than us, yeah, they don't always know everything. A lot of older people think that Ellen White and James and White are the ones that founded this, about found out this knowledge from the Bible. But no, Joseph Bates made this leaflet here. And, he, and James and Ellen Wilde found it, and then that's how they learn about the Sabbath. But people like me and you are really, really lucky in that our parents encourage us to read the Bible and they tell us about the Sabbath, and that is a real blessing. So two things to think about from Joseph Bate, number one. Number one is, how do you spend your money? Are you spending your money on things that could spread the gospel, okay? That's something to remember. Now, the next one is John Norton Loughborough. Now, uh, this man, um, he sold tracts, like what I told you before, those papers with things about God. Um, he sold them at the end of worship meetings. For, so, for example, you know, if you go to Wednesday night prayer meeting, well, if before when church was open, you went to Wednesday night prayer meeting or you had a campaign at your church where a pastor would preach, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, at the end, after he preached, after he sang the songs, this man, John Norton Loughborough, would sell these tracts or give these literature, literature out so people could learn more about God. Now, I know this might sound normal right now, but this was revolutionary. Yes, people had not done this before. At the end of a worship meeting, they would just go home. But now he was saying, how can we spread the gospel more? How can we make sure that they have more to learn? How can I share more? And the way he did that was to give out these tracts. Now, in 1908, when he was 76, put your hand up if you know anyone who's 76 years old. Is your grandma, <laughs> your granddad, you know, the old lady from church or the old man from church? Are they 76? <laughs> anyone who's 76? Yes. When he was 76, very, 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 very old, he traveled through Europe, through Africa, through Hawaii, through Australia. Now, actually, let me tell you something, guys. You see how nowadays you take a plane, we're just like, oh, I want to go to, when you go travel abroad, you go to, you, you travel, you get an airplane for about eight hours, and then you're there, or maybe three hours or five hours. Listen, back then, they used to get a train for three days, four days. The travel journey was completely different, okay? So when it says he traveled around Europe, we shouldn't think, you know, aeroplane. We should think the slow, slow choo-choo train. Yeah, the slow choo-choo train. <laughs> and he was ordained as an elder at 22, which is, again, I know it sounds old, but it's not. 22 is not that old. And he was an elder at a church. So you, you, do you have elders at your church? Guys, how old are your elders? Are they about 40, 50, that kind of age? Do you have any 22-year-old elders? Anyone? Because I sure don't. So this is very young. And there, there was a school a few years ago. There was a school named after John Loughborough. It was uh, John Norton Loughborough. It's called John Loughborough. And I went there. It was so much fun. So can you see a picture of uh, the logo and the school? There was me at school. Oh, my days more than 10 years ago again <laughs> so you can see that when you do great things you do great things not only for yourself but for the people that come after you many many more years when john loughborough you know started giving out leaflets or, or tracks at the end of a worship service he didn't think one day there'll be a girl called rumby and she'll go to a school named after me he didn't think that okay but this is what happens when you do great things and you seek to share God's word, yeah? You leave what we call a legacy. Can everyone say legacy? You leave a legacy. I can't see your mouth moving. Legacy. No mouth moving. All right, the next person is, oh, I can't see because of the name. Is this um, this thing? Okay, let me just do this. John Byington. Now, John Byington, he was a farmer preacher. 
what does that mean a farmer preacher it means that sometimes he's go farming has anyone ever been on a farm sheep cows i walk past farms all the time at the moment sheep cows what else goats what else can you keep on a uh, hopefully he didn't keep the pigs um but many different farms, on the farm there are many different animals and he used to tend to these animals. So during the day, this guy could be making sure everything, the, the cows are milked, the chickens are fed, everything. And then he also made time to spread the gospel, to tell other people about God. Now, what can we learn from this? I have a good friend, actually. He's an engineer. Or me, I can tell you why. Yeah, should I tell you about my good friend? Uh, yeah, I can tell you. I can tell you about loads of different people. They have different daytime jobs. So during the daytime, when you're older, you might want to be a doctor, a nurse, a lawyer, uh, a photographer, an artist. Um, what other careers? There are many, many different careers that you can do. Absolutely. But you can also make time to spread the gospel. You don't have to pick one or the other. You can do both, okay? With whatever talents you have. So some of you are good at exercising. Some of you are good at maths. Some of you are good at science. Whatever you're good at, you can, you don't have to, God doesn't want us to stop doing that. He wants us to do both, yeah? To tell other people about God and also do what we're good at. Now, this man, John Byington, he read an article from the Review and Herald, which is a publisher, in 1852 about the Sabbath, and he became an Adventist. So a lot of us, some of us are born, and then our families, straight away, they tell us about the Adventist church. Other, others, we grow up, we grow up, and we don't know about the Adventist church, and then we learn about it. Now, John Byington is one of those people. He was born, he grew up, he was a farmer, then he learned about the Adventist church. And once he learned about the Adventist church, he started telling other people about God. Now, he bought a property. Now, what did I say about our money? He had, this guy had money. What did he do with his money? He bought a piece of land. What do I mean by land? Is that buying a park? Imagine he buying a park. He bought a park, basically a park. He bought land, like a park. And on it, on that land, they built the very first Seventh-day Adventist church, okay? With the money he had in his pocket, he bought a park, and then he built a ch and then they built the first Adventist church. And this is a key one. Have you guys heard about the thing Black Lives Matter on the news? Have you been watching the news? Yes, you've been watching Black Lives Matter. This man, he was white but he still fought for Black Lives Matter, okay? Well, it wasn't called Black Lives Matter there, but, you know, black people were slaves back then. Have you heard about a bit about that um, in your history? If you don't know about that, you need to buy a book about, ask your parents to buy your book, you need to learn. Um, this man, even though he was white, he fought to free the slaves, okay? He, he fought for justice and equality. So a lot of the time, if we see something, sometimes, what happens is if we see um, something, if we see, if you've got a friend called Jim and Becky, yeah, Jim and Becky, and Jim upsets Becky, because Jim has upset Becky and not you, you think, oh, this has nothing to do with me. But it does. Even if Jim upsets Becky, you need to go and try and help Becky, okay? You can tell Jim, don't be mean. What I'm trying to say is even if a problem, if there's a problem with the world and it's not, it doesn't feel like it's affecting you, you should still do something about it. And that's exactly what John Byington did. Now in the um, worksheet, there's another, I think that was the last person, John Byington. Yes. In the worksheet, there's another person called, I think it's William Edson White. That is for you to read up about. It's not, it's not like it, it's, you, you don't have to come up with 10,000 um, facts, even just one fact, just for you to go, do, go on Google and Google this man, okay, and find out more about him. So there's one person on the sheet, it's, a, it's an additional task, yeah? One person on the sheet that you need to find out about. Okay, so this is what I had asked you to hold in your head. How can I hear God's voice? Hmm. Now, I've got four different pictures here, and these are just my suggestions, okay? This is what I've experienced in my life, and I would say I'm very young. The first one is preaching. 
You know, some, when, when the pastor's preaching and he's talking to us, we can hear God's voice through what he's saying. Yes, that is one way. Now, my question is, are you awake when the pastor is preaching? Or do you fall asleep? Hmm? You can even ask your pet. And if you're, this is, sometimes my mom used to fall asleep in church. So I used to have to like prod her. <laughs> yeah. So that's one way which God can speak to us. The second way is through the Bible. This is a really important way. When we read the Bible and we, and we read that um, Jesus loves us or um, what's my favorite? My favorite um, or in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. We're learning more about God and he's speaking through us through the Bible. So what's very, very, very important is if you want to hear God's voice, you have to read what? The Bible. Now, another way is to listen is from our families, like our parents, our carers, our grandma, our granddad. You know, there's, um, there's a verse in the Bible in Exodus. One of the Ten Commandments is about honoring your father and your mother. And that is a key way to learn more about God. Yes? So my sister's coming here. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, to learn more about God is by honoring your father and your mother, listening to your parents. That is a key way to hear God's voice. Okay. I know sometimes parents can be annoying and you know, it, it feels like they're annoying. They're always telling you what to do, but they're telling you what to do because they love you. Yeah. And they, they're a bit older, so they know more about the world. Um, even though even it's very even it's very hard for me sometimes to listen to my mom too okay I'll be honest so I really get where you're coming from um, the fourth way is um, I put a picture of the brain and like tools in the brain like we were talking about before through visions and uh, through the vision like Ellen White said like like Ellen White experienced someone talking to them whilst they're awake and through dreams and uh, did anyone was anyone there the last time I taught the listening award? Was anyone put your hand up if if I if you if you were there? Yes, yeah. Oh, I see some. I can see oh many many hands. Like Kristen, Nathan, Samuel, Michael. Oh, is that Matten, Grace, and Nat? Yes, I can see some hands up. Absolutely, you can put your hands down. Yes. Yeah, so when I was teaching the listening award. We, talk, we talked about the boy Samuel. I remember he was asleep and then God said, God called him Samuel, Samuel. And he thought it was Eli. So it's, if you get confused about is God calling me or not, that is okay. It is okay to be confused. It's okay not to know. It, it's just a learning experience, okay? So when Samuel got up, he said, here I am. Uh, no, he went to, to, to Eli, the priest, and said, here I am. Eli's like, I'm not calling you. And then again, he got confused. And Eli said, I'm not calling you. It must be God, okay? So trial and error. So uh, sometimes we're like, we're wondering, you know, is this God's voice or not? But through experience, we learn, do you know what? This is God's voice. Or if we ask other people for advice, like our parents, our pastor, our pathfinder teacher, our adventurer teacher, if we ask these people, they are able to tell us and help guide us, yeah? So he can speak to us through visions, through dreams, and he can just call us like he did Samuel, okay? And this can, yes, yes. Now, how can we tell others about God? Can you see I've got a newspaper here, an envelope here. Um, I've got a picture of me I'm doing, <laughs> of the Adventure Awards and food there. Now, one way we can tell others about God is writing. I'm going to go to the next slide. Is to write a newspaper to send to church members. And you know, a few years ago, I actually, me and my friend Hayley, we did, um, we, we made a, new, a news article thing called Pathfinder Press. You could make one, call it Adventurer Press, or, you know, um, Adventurers Tell the World. Something exciting. You can write different stories in it. You can send it to church members. Now we have things electronically. You can send an email, or you can send it to even your neighbors. All these things, you can do it. Um, 
what else can you you can draw pictures to send people stuck at home if you like drawing pictures and you, with the picture you can put a bible verse at the bottom with encouraging words like god loves you or um what's my by, by, by my favorite one is there's no good thing that god will withhold from me that's my favorite bible verse all these verses you can put them you can collect food for a food bag is, is anyone doing that already helping out give out food can see some nods absolutely i'm putting my hand up i haven't done it i'm i'm saying we could all try okay um you could send an email to one of our friends who's not a christian try to cheer them up we could invite some of our school friends to attend the online adventure awards now these fun things are happening every week but have you told your friends huh have you told your friends might be really really bored at home but have you told them about it that's a key way. So next week, um, when Pastor Dayan releases the award, you can invite them and say, guess what? I'm going to do this fun thing online. Um, you should join in. That's a, another way. And talk to your neighbors about God. You know, just, and you don't have to say to them, sometimes it's tempting to say, Jesus loves you, love him too. But we can also tell, him, tell them about the good things Jesus has done for us. Like what? good things um god is giving me a job i've got a job right now well i've got food what are my luxuries um i like books i order books on amazon um all those things that all i lost yesterday i had an ice cream and i can say god provides for me in that way yeah it was vegan the ice cream now there are books this is a task for you guys to do this is a homework task so remember these are the different books that I could find online. But one of the requirements is to read a book on Adventist heritage. On Adventist heritage. So read a book about one of the pioneers. And these are the books that I was able to find. So if you find any book on Adventist pioneer, ask your parents to purchase it. If they can't purchase it, um, maybe there's a PDF copy or ask your club. Um, Oh, you can even ask me and I'll see what I can do, okay? If you can't purchase one. I'm sure you can find a way to get hold of me. Now, time for singing! Now, one of the things, <laughs> one of the things that we have to do is to um, uh, sing an early, to learn the first verse of an early Adventist hymn. I'll be honest, I haven't got my singing voice on today, but um, put your hand up if you know this song. You know, it's, you know this song. Okay, so I will um sing. How about Pastor Dan? You can sing with me if you want as well. So I'll sing the first verse. <laughs> It'd be, I'll sing the first verse. You think Pastor Dan should sing with me? And then we'll go from there. I'm sure you all know it, so you can sing along with me, okay? <clears throat> Let me get my singing voice ready. Um, Tis love that makes us happy. Tis love that soothes the way. It helps us mind, it makes us kind to others every day. God is love, we're his happy children. God is love, we would be like him. Tis love that makes us happy, tis love that soothes the way. It helps us mind, it makes us kind to others every day. Can I get a round of applause, please? Should I take a bow? Bow. <laughs> But I saw you guys bopping your head and clapping, but where are you singing? Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to sing the chorus again, and you guys try and join in. Yeah, thumbs up. Let me, I'm going to check to see if your mouths are moving. I'll do the, okay, let's do from the top, actually, um, the first verse in the chorus. Are you ready, guys? Put your hands up if you're ready. Yeah, see you cheering. <laughs> okay, three, two, one. Tis love that makes us happy, tis love that smooths the way. It helps us smile, it makes us kind to others every day. God is love, we his little children. God is love, we would be like him. Tis love that makes us happy, tis love that smooths the way. It helps us smile, it makes us kind to others every day. Way! Big well done to Jeremiah. I saw your mouth moving. Matin, Matty. Well done to everyone singing. Jaden, big smile. <laughs> Loving it, guys.
So make sure you remember this hymn, okay? Make sure it's a beautiful hymn. Now we're gonna go to food and cooking. So making a batch of granola. Now these are the short bought granolas on the left side. We've got Jordan's Oat, we've got Simply Granola by Sainsbury's and Crunchy Nut Granola by Kellogg's. Now I used to be one of those people that bought granola, you know? I used to think, you know what? Jordan's granola is actually so expensive and I used to buy it. However, my friend sent me a recipe, Haley, sent me a recipe. She said, Rumbri, you know, making granola is not that hard. And guess what? I made it. Now, my first batch, I would say, was a 6 out of 10. But my batches now, they have to be 9.9 .9 out of 10. So on the right-hand side, you can see my batch of granola. Now, I'm going to show you some pictures of how I made my granola. Now, these are the ingredients that you need. They do cost a little bit of money, I'm not going to lie. Um, what's expensive here, the coconut. coconut. This is vegan granola. Uh, Semi-vegan. No, it's not vegan because of the honey, but it's a healthy version. I use coconut oil, got a bit of vanilla, maple syrup, the pure stuff, organic honey, little bit of salt, a banana. It's better when it's darker than that. You know when it's dark and it's got the bruises and you don't really want it anymore? You can use it to make granola. Got some raisins, almonds, kaya seeds, very good for you. So this is what I use, but it's not what you have to use. For example, if you're allergic to almonds, don't use it. Use whatever you feel is necessary. And there's um, cinnamon, cinnamon. Mwah. Lovely, tasty stuff. Now, I'll go through this quickly. So first you put the ingredients here in the bowl. Next one, see that coconut oil, you melt it. That's on the pot. So you need to make it with your parents, okay? You put it in the pot, it melts like that. And then you add a little bit of vanilla going on. Then can you see, I mashed my banana. <coughs> sorry then i mixed it with the um oil and the honey and the um maple syrup i use both no, is it maple syrup it's yeah it's maple syrup i i use both maple syrup and honey just because i'm an experimenter you mix it again if you don't have a blender that's fine you don't need one yeah it's just what i like to do the blended oats because i like it you know crunchy 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 and I put it in the oven then put it in the oven about 25 minutes. Again, your parent does that for you. Then, bam, granola. There you go. This stuff is tasty and it is healthy. So my motto in life is, if I like it that much, I need to learn how to make it, yeah? If there's a food that you really, really like, learn how to make it because it's always cheaper, yeah? And then you can make it according to your taste buds. Now, what do, does granola have to do with pioneers? What does granola have to do with anything? Now, what we eat affects our brain. It affects our whole body. It affects what we think and how well we can move. Now, I've got a quick one. Does anyone here have, um, have hay fever? Oh my days. Does anyone have, every time you go outside, you start sneezing, blah, 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 blah. There are certain foods that you eat that can make the sneezing less, okay? Like if you hate sneezing and all of the, Google the stuff, Google what kind of foods in your body um, kind of help you build what we call your immune system, build the fighting, the fighting weapons in your body so that you won't be sneezing as much. So what you, the pioneers, part of finding the Adventist church was the pioneers finding out that what god cares about what you eat god cares about every single thing that you do whether you're eating um what, what you have for dinner if it's a pasta bake if, if it's a little bit of sadza if it's some rice some rice and peas some jerk chicken some what else can we eat some yams some sweet potato noodles cassava whatever it is god cares about it now why does god care about it because our bodies are the temple of god what we eat has an effect on how long we live. I'll give you a classic example, guys. I didn't go to the dentist often, honestly. When you're young, it is free, okay? Then I found out I had a hole in my tooth. It was very, very, very sad. I went to the dentist 
and the lady said it will cost me 200 pounds to fix this hole in my tooth and i was so sad and she said to me one of the things that she said to me she said do you drink fizzy drinks <laughs> that's the question she asked me she said do you eat sweets she uh, and then she said even if you don't eat sweets are you always eating dried fruit dried fruit like a dried mango dried you know those stripy things those fruit things and i said i'm not going to tell you my answers and all those things they uh, they my teeth here i've got a hole i've got a hole in my tooth guys and all those things that affect our body in different ways so when we put food we buy it, it goes into our mouth it goes into it affects our teeth it affects our digestive system and it, the blood that pumps around our body and the brain this is why the pioneers cared about granola because they cared about what we put in our body now specifically that was a long-winded story i'm so sorry so specifically they cared about breakfast i need to hurry up breakfast is the time um i'll read some of the quotes it says at breakfast time the stomach is in a better condition to take care of more food than at the second or third meal of the day so granola is like a, a, a really nutritious meal that we can have for breakfast and and um if you if you haven't heard already Kellogg, the man that started the cereal, Kellogg Cornflakes, he was Adventist. He founded this. Now, people are already eating bran, already what, what is made, is it bran? Well, they're already meat eating what is made out of cornflakes, but they weren't having it for breakfast. It was a new thing to have your biggest meal at breakfast. And that's why it's important for you guys. You guys, your biggest meal of the day needs to be breakfast. You shouldn't be having, you know, cakes, pastries sweets you need to make sure you have a full breakfast to last you throughout the day and that is what the pioneers found now this is an activity for you guys to do i haven't done this yet um because i didn't have the material but you need to get a bandana or to get um, a sheet um get one like this i'm not gonna cut cut this like this and then you can cut it ask your parents if you can cut it then you can do a paint dye or you can decorate it with different pens yeah different colors that's what you need to do and dress up as a pioneer like that okay and this is how the pioneers used to dress there you dress up you and your parents or your carers whoever you live with your brothers and your sisters you can dress up as pioneers and you can take pictures all right the young ladies you wear long 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 things that scratch your toes you can see the little hat thing there now a bible verse we need to memorize Revelation 14, verse 12. Now, um, as you can see, I've got a puzzle. Pastor, are you there? <laughs> Quick puzzle, Pastor. Are you there? Yeah, yeah okay. I'm here. Okay. Okay, I would like you to guess the pictures. Here is the... Uh, let us adventurers to put them in the chat. Because, oh, yeah. Because they were quiet on the chat for a little while. So uh, let's let's find what they say, uh, everybody. So uh, let's do it, Rumbi. You, you lead them. Here is the what? What's this timer? What is this? Is it okay? Here is the what? Okay, so well, the different answers are coming through. Some people are saying uh, he is the time, he uh, he is the hour, <clears throat> he is the patience. Yes, patience. <laughs> okay, of the what could be the next picture? What words right. could be the next picture? Here is the patience of the. All right, uh, people are saying uh, saints. Yes, excellent. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the what. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, our adventurers are writing quickly. All right, the answers are slowly coming in, and they are using two words that are commandments and law. Commandments. Here are those who keep, well done everyone, keep the commandments of God and the what? And the... Uh, All right. Okay. People are writing again. Uh, our adventure is amazing. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> they are saying those who, uh, they're using the word faith. Yes. Well done everyone that took part. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Now, quickly, guys, sorry, I realize I've been talking a lot today. Go and get a big book. You've got 30 seconds.
to go and get a big book. Pass that. I'll finish at five two. Yeah. No, 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 Romy, no, 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 no stress, sure. Okay. Okay. Go and get a large book, everyone. Go and get a large book quickly, 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 quickly. <laughs> okay, I've got my large book here. Um. Yeah, this is my large book. Now, what you need to do is stand up. Um, stand up with your large book. Uh, my thing. And get your large book out. And I want you to try holding it out with one hand. One hand. Out like that. And we'll, have, we'll do 15 seconds all together. Let me check. Let me look at everyone's video to see they've got a large book. All right, I'm seeing. Kristen, Matty, you got your large book. More morning eight. Look at my Yes, large books. Tremaine. MJ. Who's that? Miss Abby Kid Wadiwa. Godson. Well done. Jean Bernard. I'm seeing some excellent. Okay, large books. Now, what I want you to do is hold it out like this. Let me see if I can see myself. Hold it out like this and we'll count 15 seconds. Are you ready? We'll time ourselves. Three, two, one. Uh, I'll put two of mine. Go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Ah, well done, everyone. Round of applause. Now, the reason why we're doing this, as you can see in the pictures, these two people are holding a very big book. Now, this book was 18.5 pounds and 8.4 k or 8.4 kg. Now, Ellen White, the lady that we saw at the beginning, beginning, she held out a very, very, very big book while she was in a vision. Okay, whilst in a vision, she held out this a very heavy book for more than half an hour can you believe it half an hour holding out this big a big book my arms have my hands tired holding out a big book like that and people were amazed so it shows that we can do amazing things amazing things that we can't imagine when god is in control yeah when God, when we allow god to take over our lives we can do amazing things like holding big books now, if you want to challenge yourself, when this is finished, tomorrow, you can get a big book and you can try weigh them with your parents or whoever you live with, your guardian, weigh them out, uh, weigh it out and make sure it's 8.4 kg and then try to hold it out for, for as long as you can. And let me know how it goes. So there's my friend Catherine and my friend Shavin. And this book was actually 8 point. This is well, actually, this is at Battle Creek where Ellen White used to live. Um, yeah, we went on a school there. So now, game time, everyone. Game time, you ready for games? Okay, now the first game. So, oh wait, before. One of the requirements of the um, award is to play an American game. So I've got a few here and then we're finished. The first one is tug of war. So um, you can all see, right? We'll just see this game and this is something for you to try. Okay, let's watch it. Get set. Oh. <laughs> oh man, what happened? I fell. Did you fall hard enough? Okay, and then way it's gonna to go, go. They're gonna go a second job. time, I think. All right, way to go. If you just wait for it, tug of war number two. We're putting family against family in this matchup: Bowman and Elray versus Bean and Barry. On your mark, get set. Oh. Oh. oh no! <laughs> so you can play this game at home with your family. You don't have to have the water in the middle, but it's something for you to try. Tug of war. Now I was gonna play with my sister, but we're not gonna do that. <laughs> um, the next one is hopscotch. So the little girl has thrown the stone on the floor and she's jumping over it. Go pick it up. Yay. So something for you guys to try. You can get chalk on the floor, put chalk on the floor and play this game. 
yeah right we'll go to the next one so we, what was the last one it was oh i can't remember it was tug of war and then you can do hopscotch it's up to you, you only have to do one and now you jump rope skipping rope so i've actually got a skipping rope and i'm gonna show you guys my skills yeah i'm here are you ready here's my rope how many do you think i can do write down in the chat how many you think i can do in one go i'll lift my video up in a second how many do you think i can do do you think i can do five do you think i can do ten do you think i can do three <laughs> people are saying two or eleven <laughs> There is people who have a lot of faith in you. They're saying a hundred billion times. You don't have enough time. I think I can do a hundred billion faster. But <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna go now. Okay, you guys ready? Me. Hopefully, I won't break my sister's house. But two, one, go. One, four, six. Oh, I did five. So that was my trial. <laughs> five. Did I do? <laughs> Uh, you did you did not disappoint <laughs> people who said less than this and the people who said five you did five well done but that was my warm-up my warm-up can i have one more chance okay guys i think i'll get to 10 okay and and uh three hours later room the room is <laughs> i did it right I'm sweaty now. So that's something you could try. <laughs> My workout. But I have a better jump rope for you guys to watch. <sighs> Whilst I breathe, watch this. Oh, sorry, it started in the middle. Wow. This is exactly what the Pathfinder directors do when they have some free time. You know, I can see, I can yes. see, I can see Clifford myself and Pastor Andre doing the same thing. So, yeah. Yes, as you can see, these three girls are not as good as me. I'm joking. <laughs> but yeah, there's so many possibilities that you can do with these American games. Now, the last thing I think on the thing is an early American craft wagon. And there's, um, I haven't quite finished my wagon. It's in the making process. So I just use an old cardboard box from um, Amazon, a book off Amazon. So you don't need to, you know, go to the shop to that. Yeah. And you need your parents to help you because it involves scissors and glue. And it's quite, it's very, very hard to do this. Very hard. And there's a YouTube video which shows you how to make it. And it would be good if you just got a bit of tissue and you covered it to make the cut, but you'll see what I mean in terms of the yeah. cut here. You can and we would love to, uh, Rumbi, and we would like to encourage everybody to, to do the trials and send us the pictures of the early American uh, wagon. Uh, so guys, uh, the email is posted in the chat room. Uh, uh, every week we post on Wednesdays, make sure the pictures get by Friday, uh, Tuesday night. Uh, so, uh, so send us those, and if you can, decorate them as well. We would love to see it. We would love to see it. <laughs> yeah so make your um, early american cross your wagon and right we've come to the end so well done everyone for holding the book for singing along we've done as you can see I've